Hi everyone, and welcome to Easy Tutorial Bits. In this video, we'll cover how to install and manage plugins, samples, sound fonts, and their folders. Now, if you don't know where to get them, check my Pinterest page link below for free plugins, sound fonts, and samples, and also other useful tutorials and resources like how to mix and master your song or cool in studio session videos. Let me first show you the default location for these folders. The fastest way to access them is by using the right mouse button in FL Studio's browser. The samples are installed here. Sound fonts are located here. And finally, you can find the plugins location by right clicking on any folder and choose Manage Plugins. Here's the default plugins location. For simplicity's sake, I've disabled a few locations, but they should all be enabled. Now what I did, and really recommend you to do, is create a custom plugins and samples folder structure. And as you can see, a few of them also have subfolders. You can also make subfolders within subfolders, as long as the path doesn't exceed 260 characters. To install and use samples or sound fonts is really easy. After you're done downloading them, just copy them to a folder and add it to the browser like we did in the fourth video of this series. Now, within FL Studio, samples can be dragged onto the channel rack or to the plugin if it supports drag and drop. For sound fonts, just simply drag them to the channel rack. Let's look into plugins now. Plugins come in various formats. FL Studio supports the VST format, which are available in both 32 and 64 bits. Within the VST format, you have the standard VST, VST2, and VST3. These are simply newer enhanced versions, and FL Studio supports them all. These plugins can be installed in two different ways. For plugins that don't come with an installation file, just simply extract the zip file and move the .dll file to your plugins folder. For those that do come with an installation file, just go ahead and install them. If it's possible, install both the 32 and 64-bit versions of that plugin. For more information on differences between 32 and 64-bits, watch the third video of this series. Have in mind that not all plugins permit you to install both the 32 and 64-bits versions in the same folder, and that's why I always simply create two subfolders for this. I always like to install plugins in their own subfolder within the plugins folder, which by the way won't always work for VST3 plugins, as they won't always give you the option to customize the installation path. Now, if the plugin comes with a huge preset library and gives me the option to customize the library path, I either install or move the library after the installation process to a subfolder within a folder that I've created for those libraries. After the installation is done, go to the Plugins Manager and add your Plugins folder. Also, make sure that Verify Plugins is enabled. Now click on Start Scan. The new plugins will appear in yellow and most of the time automatically categorized. If you see a question mark, categorize it by first selecting it then in the Plugins tab, choose the correct type and apply changes. Finally, if you want the plugin to appear in this plugins list, add it to the favorites list by clicking here. And if it's not in the favorites list, select more plugins to load or search it here and also access the plugins manager. To uninstall a plugin, use its uninstaller if the plugin has one. If not, just delete it from your VST folder and rescan it again to clear up the list. You can load the plugins in various ways. Through the Add menu here, through the browser here, by dragging a generator to the channel rack or an effect to the mixer, on the channel rack here, by right clicking then insert, or just simply with a plus sign here. On the mixer, by clicking on a slot to load an effect, and finally, 
the coolest way through the plugin clicker, which you can access here by pressing F8 or by simply clicking the middle mouse button. It's possible that your plugins list looks different than mine's. That has to do with what options you've selected when installing. I like the default option where FL Studio puts all the plugins in their respective categories. Unfortunately, you cannot change this after the installation. That's because FL Studio creates a different folder structure within the plugins reference folder according to the option that you have selected before installing FL Studio. That said, you can still do two things. One is switch to simple view where the plugins aren't categorized at all. Or create your own subfolder in the plugins database, which will appear in both the plugins list and plugins picker. Now we'll add that custom folder to the plugins database. The easiest way to add a folder is by using FL Studio's browser. You can select this plugins database button on the browser to only show plugins related folders. Now right click on effects or generators and select open. Here we can create folders and subfolders. You can also add prefix to dictate the order regardless of the folder name. And of course, you can do the same for the effects plugins database. Now I'll show you how to add your installed plugins to the database. You can do this in two ways. The first way is by selecting the plugin in the browser. Right click and select add to plugins database. But as you can see, FL Studio basically recommends you to do this the second way, which I'm about to show you. Read this here to see why. The second way is to first load the plugin. Now select the folder in which you want to add that plugin. Be sure you select the folder in the right category, effects or generators, depending on the plugin type that you want to add. In the plugins wrapper, select add to plugins database and you're done. Most of the time, FL Studio will create a thumbnail of the plugin on that moment. If not, you'll just see the plugin's name, but you'll still be able to load it. There are videos showing how to manually add a thumbnail if that's the case. Although, I think that with the recent version of FL Studio, you won't be having this problem. You can always move plugins references within the plugins database. But doing this will result in losing the thumbnail. So, the easiest way is to just simply add it again. To the proper folder. To delete it from the plugins database, just right click and select delete. This won't uninstall the plugins from the VST folder, but just delete it from the plugins database folder. When you're done setting up your plugins database, you can make a backup and use it for future FL Studio versions. Okay, so that's it for this video. Now that you know how to install third party plugins, let's see how you can link them to your keyboard in the next few videos.